We, Sonia, and Januni are a couple of pals studying science in undergrad. We are not professionals. Though every episode is meticulously researched, mistakes do happen. If you notice that anything, and we mean anything, we state is inaccurate, please let us know. Your comments, suggestions, and queries are important in furthering our personal and audience's understanding of science. Thanks for being a part of this discussion. We appreciate you. We really do. Bop, bop. Beep, bop, bop. Welcome back to another episode of Beaker Bros. I am Sonia. I'm Janune. And like I just said, we're Beaker Bros. <laughs> in so, case you missed that. In case you missed it, we'll say it one more time. Beaker. Beaker. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Wait, okay. You... Beaker Bros. Where we drink out of beakers. Anyways, um, <laughs> this week's episode... Uh, if you are a student or an individual, you, literally if you're anyone, you know what, if you're anyone, or <laughs> regardless regardless of your age, I feel like I'm not going to specify it to like students. If you're or, working in any capacity. Yes, that's the way to say it. If you are working in any sort of capacity, you may have experienced a phenomenon known as burnout. Burnout. Where you're constantly tired and don't want to do shit. That's my definition. Janini, do you have a more eloquent version of what burnout is? Yeah. So there's a psychologist dude. His uh-huh. name is Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name. Keep going. So a psychologist named Herbert. That's a fun name. We coined the term burnout um, by defining it as the loss of motivation and growing sense of emotional depletion. Mm-hmm. So what he did basically observed um, volunteers working at a free clinic in New York City and he identified the mental health workers basically finding themselves depleted and like wary, resenting the patients and the clinic, which we know can be bad. Not can. Well, yeah, it is. It, it is, is bad. bad. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're working with vulnerable populations when you have, you know, you, like you're supposed to be some sort of like stability for them. Exactly. And you are in and, a phase of not being as stable as you feel or at its peak yeah you're not at your peak when you're working with vulnerable populations it could be very um unsafe i guess for a lot of people yeah yeah like you were saying before if they if you are someone that provides stability to people undergoing you know difficult times in your life and you're not able to perform at your peak Mm -hmm. that says a lot about i guess the work environment that you're in yeah is there toxicity to it Mm -hmm. is there are you not paid enough? And I was going to say, and, like, the whole, like, resenting the patients thing. Like, yeah. yeah, you can, like, not want to go to work and everything, but the moment that you, like, resent the people who are coming and seeking mm-hmm. help from you mm-hmm. kind of becomes quite, as you said, like, not safe. Yeah, not to get too off topic too mm-hmm. much, but there's cases that we hear of, like, elderly abuse mm-hmm. in old age homes. Yeah. And a lot of the times what ends up happening is there are some disgusting people out there. Yeah. And that's and me saying this isn't minimized or, like, enabling them in any sort of way. But no, I'm definitely. Trying, no, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to say that, like, when people in those sort of positions and in work environments get exhausted by the people that they're always around, like, it puts the old folks and vulnerable people in a very tough situation. Which kind of just shows you how, like, serious... I know, like, a lot of students just talk about, I feel burnt out, I feel mm-hmm. burnt out. But just the severity of that, like, that term could have so much more, like, such... What, what is that word? Like, devastating effects. Not only on you, but, like, individuals around you. Mm-hmm. Okay, Janine. Um. So, <laughs> with that definition and that little bit of an overview being said, mm-hmm. I wanted to turn our gears to looking at some of the symptoms of burnout okay Alrighty. so here at beaker bros we're not ones for self-diagnosing no no we are not no no however but <laughs> but <laughs> we're gonna do it today <laughs> yeah we're, the, the mayo clinic on their uh, website they just have a brief section that has questions that you could ask yourself to Get a gauge of whether or not you may or may not be experiencing burnout. Obviously, this isn't like a clinical, Mm -hmm. diagnosable sort of questionnaire that you can base your health on. It's more of just things to think for yourself. All right? So, I'm going to ask you a few questions here. Okay. Let's let's have a conversation about this, okay? Okay. So, first up, we have 
Have you become cynical or critical at work? I'm going to say no. Okay. Yeah. And you know what? I'll ask myself these questions in return as mm-hmm. well. Um, personally, hmm, I'm not cynical, like, for me with school right now, specifically, because I'm currently not working. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I'm cynical. I Critical in the sense that, like, I'm always criticizing my work, I guess, but okay. not critical of, like, in a negative sense. Yeah, like, you're just, no, yeah, I don't yeah. see Yeah, so I guess to answer that question, no. No. Uh, oops. <laughs> Um, do you drag yourself to work or have trouble getting started? Work? No, but, like, Mm school-related, like, assignments and stuff? Yeah. Okay, so you have experience, I guess, on, like, multiple, um... Occasions. They're not on occasions, just, like, multiple areas of where you could experience burnout. Mm Because right now you are someone who's working part-time. Yeah. And then you're also someone in school taking a full course load, which mm-hmm. is absolutely impressive to me. Um, it's yeah, it's it's hard to ma- <laughs> it's hard to manage. So good good on you. Thank but, you. Yeah. So sorry, just to clarify. You're saying that like in your work setting, you're I'm fine. But here at school, you're feeling a little more of a a, a little bit uh, kind of a drag to start things. Okay. That's, yeah. That's that's justified. But like once I start things, like mm-hmm. I'm zooming through them. It's just like start zooming. I'm Whoa. zooming. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I'm starting and stopping okay. and going on my phone. Then realizing I've been on my phone for too long. Then I'm going off my phone and then I'm back online. So you're like driving through the city and I'm more like driving like on the highway. Like you know how like you have to pick up the speed. Yeah. And then you're like zooming on the highway. Mm-hmm. But like you're more like. Stop at the light. Stop and go. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't have to focus that long, why would I? Yeah. Anyways, uh, we've been on this question a long time. <laughs> Let's just do rapid fire for the rest of them. Okay. Do you lack the energy to consistently be productive? Yes. Yeah. Same here. Do you find it hard to concentrate? Oh, yeah. Based on my <laughs> yeah. answer, I do too. Yeah. Uh, do you lack satisfaction from your achievements? No. Um... I don't know. Like, I always personally feel like I could... That's... Sorry not to diminish what you're saying. How dare you? <laughs> you? We'll get up and leave. But, um... I don't know. Like, you don't so, feel satisfied? Like, with... Like, achievements? I mean, I always feel like I could be doing more. And I guess that's like a work-life balance thing I need to improve upon. But that's fair. It, I mean, I'm pretty sad. Like, I'm... the first, I'm pretty sad. I'm, sorry. I'm pretty sad. <laughs> I'm pretty satisfied, I guess. Like, if first year self looked at me now, I think they'd be pretty stoked. That's so, awesome. Yeah. I'm glad. Thanks. I'm, I'm glad you're you're doing okay, too. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't know where to go with that. Uh, do you feel disillusioned about your job? What do you mean by that? So, by disillusioned, I mean, like, disappointed or let down or just, like, like the content of my job and stuff like that. Yeah, like oh, no. everything around it. I guess. No, I'm not disappointed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're it's not. Fun. Okay, cool. And with school as well. It's fun to an extent. Okay. It's fun until they give me homework. Ah, yeah. Not. The learning is fun, but yeah. then when you gotta the like focus on it, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the pain in the ass. How about you? Um. Yeah, I'm more or less on the same page. Yeah, learning is great mm-hmm. when you're getting tested on it. That's not, not so too great. <laughs> oh. Um, are you using food, drugs, or alcohol to feel better or to simply not feel? No. Okay. No. Well, hey. Almost like you considered all those like mochi ice creams. That like, I ate. just they're for the soul, man. Yeah. Like, they just give you a little hug. It's like a reward for every like task I do. It's like a reward. A reward. <laughs> um. Yeah. How about you? I mean, but hey, like, if I do well on something, I mean, I'm not suppressing anything, but hey, I like food. I like food. <laughs> I'll eat. I'll eat. Um, I'm not using it to feel nothing, though, so. Yeah, like, definitely, yeah, no. Yeah. It's a big no. But, um, Is that it? Um, there's more questions. Um, have you, have your sleep habits changed? Oh, yeah. I wake up early. Oh, my God. Oh my god! Yeah, I do too. You wake up early? I mean, when I have to. When I don't want to, I oh, I, I change my mind then. It, it, like, I'm like, sure, like, the other day you woke up at, like, 2 p.m. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Okay, then my, okay, my sleep habits are weird. Like, if they I... They are very, like, 
I don't want to say all over the place, but they're not, like... They're, Con- they used to be consistent. Yeah, and then they stopped. Yeah. Because I'm tired. But, like, I have no problem getting up when I have to get up, but mm-hmm. when I don't have to get up... Oh, I, yeah. Like, go to bed at 4 a.m. and wake up at 2 p.m. It's not good, but we do it anyways. Anyways. Um, are you troubled by unexplained headaches, stomach, or bowel problems, or other <laughs> physical complaints? No. I don't... I mean, I don't know, I've always, I've always had headaches. Yeah. But I don't think, like, recently there's been a change in the consistency of my headaches. Okay, and I would have to be the same as well. Like, whatever health conditions I have or, or currently have whatever experienced, mm-hmm. I don't think they've changed necessarily. That's fair. I don't know. So, based on, like, that questionnaire that we just went through. We that's... should tallied that up. <laughs> But yeah, based on uh, that questionnaire right there, that you can ask yourself some of those questions. Obviously, we answered it based on our opinions. If your opinions don't follow how you feel. If your opinions don't matter. Your opinions (laughs) mean nothing. Um, No. Like, do like a little reflection for yourself as well. Yeah, yeah. This is just us talking through to like give a better sense of how to answer these questions. But if you have your own way of answering it that's totally justified as well go for it be a bit more self-aware of your current state yeah speaking of discussing i guess like the current state Mm. of well not just personal but i guess maybe on larger scale population sizes Mm -hmm. Januni, what do you know about um just burnout on larger scales have you seen come across any studies yeah so there's one study that basically reported 2.7 million workers in germany feeling the effects of burnout jesus christ and then another a 2013 survey of human resource directors in the united kingdom found Mm -hmm. that nearly 30 percent reported that burnout was widespread within their organization yeah that's 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 crazy it's what's bad is that like okay yeah we can all say like yeah we feel like this like Uh mentally we're not there but it's also the um effect of it having like a physical toll on you yeah which could also like it's for lack of a better word bad like (laughs) it's it's been bad bad. uh but yeah and also like many of the symptoms of burnout could actually like overlap with depression and like extreme fatigue loss of passion it just like it transcends in all areas of your life. Mm-hmm. I guess when you're not able to, um, maybe transcends isn't right, the right word, but we'll just go with it anyways. Yeah, or it manifests nah, in all, in all like areas that. of um, your life. So if you're not doing good in one area, like mm-hmm. of work, it could pop up in other areas of your life, and it can cause relationship problems yeah. and just personal feelings that aren't the greatest overall feelings of like you were saying like loss of passion just overall negativity Mm -hmm. intensifying cynicism yeah basically okay there's also another part where i was saying how burnout is like more likely to occur if there's like a major mismatch between the nature of the job and the nature of the person who does the job that's so crazy so if um if you want to think of it from like a lot of students right now mm-hmm. who are entering university or will be entering university or whatever stage of their life i guess um pursuing a degree that they mm-hmm. aren't necessarily passionate about mm. this idea that you just said there perfectly highlights like one of the negative effects of not pursuing something that you're passionate about yeah cuz like okay you can do the work as much as you want to and like get good grades and whatever but like eventually it's gonna catch up to you yeah and you're not gonna feel good about it it's like cognitive dissonance right Mm -hmm. so when your um behavior doesn't match your attitude Mm -hmm. either one you experience cognitive dissonance or another thing is when you try to make like you change your attitude Mm -hmm. for your behavior okay so in a sense burnout burnout occurs when people can't change their attitude for that behavior Mm -hmm. because that mismatch is so like it's so big that you can't do anything about it so it becomes like all-encompassing like it feels like it's swallowing you i guess those feelings of negativity and just exhaustion yeah yeah i can only imagine how with i don't know just as a student right now as you can also relate (laughs) um being in university uh in an online setting Mm -hmm. i don't know about you but i've found it pretty difficult oh for sure being not just like content wise but being able to separate like that work-life balance oh no i definitely i know you 
where you're heading could continue. Yeah, not being um, able to separate those two aspects of your life, I feel like it can make you very prone to just becoming tired all the time. Because if you just feel like you're working all the time, yeah. like you're not able to relax and put down your shit and just go on a walk or do whatever. No, like I definitely think like with the online thing, you wake up, you go downstairs or like you go go to the washroom, you brush your teeth, you eat breakfast, whatever. You go back to your room or you go to the table, you do your work. Now you want to... just described my day. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, you do your work or whatever, and let's say you want to go, like, relax and, like, you know, watch Netflix, like I do. Yeah. You're doing it in the same place. Like, we used to, like, go to uh, go to campus, do our lectures. Mm-hmm. We go to the library, do our work. We come back, and coming, like, coming back to our houses or, like, our rooms, that's kind of, we associate that with, like, relaxing and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But when we're, like, online school has definitely kind of merged everything, so there's, like, levels of anxiety when you should be, like, relaxing or something. Yeah. One thing, I've said this quote to you so many times before, but whenever I think of concepts relating to burnout and just feeling like you're working constantly, okay. there's a quote by John Lennon, and he says, life's what happens when you're busy making plans. So when people feel like they're in a state of burnout and they're constantly working, they're oblivious, I guess, to the life that's outside of their mm-hmm. work, you're basically watching your life go by and not even realizing it oh that's that's true like can you believe a year ago no we weren't in school but like a year and a month ago yeah we were like in person and all that stuff like a year has passed like that's quite a bit yeah like being the 20 21 almost year olds that we are yeah happy early birthday thank you (laughs) we've got a long time to go but still um, a month from know. now, actually. Is it exactly a month? Yeah. Like oh my god. Oh my god. Mm. Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, being the 20 something or 20 year olds that we are, yeah. if you think about it, a year is 5% of our life. God, don't say it like that. It's scary. That's in the whole scheme of things, it might not seem like a big deal, but being young people, it seems like everything being yeah. inside. Yeah. And when you're not able to go out and like make the most of it in whatever capacity that may be for you Mm -hmm. it inevitably sucks yeah and that's when like mental disorders can arise and yeah that's why burnout can be so detrimental on your health yeah and i want to acknowledge though that being able to recognize your burnt doubt Mm -hmm. is a privilege in itself yeah no i agree yeah because a lot of times when people are forced to work in situations where they have to like keep going mm-hmm. and they can't do anything about it. Yeah. It 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 literally feels like it's swallowing you. Like you're in this sort of mindset that you can't escape because you have to keep working for whatever reasons. No, so yeah. yeah, so it's like you don't even <laughs> so you can't even realize like you're exhausted. Yeah, like I think we're quite like you and I, I, you know what, I'm not going to speak for you, I'll speak for me, like yeah. I'm quite privileged in the sense I'm like, you know what, this is not good, this is like stressing me out too much, I'm at like basically on the edge at the point like I'm going to burn mm-hmm. out and I can't burn out so early in my life yeah. when I'm just like only 20, but I, it's sad because I know a lot of individuals who will talk about certain situations where like they're feeling this and this and this mm-hmm. and they don't realize that they're kind of like, they're burnt out. But they still have to do it because mm-hmm. it's their job. It's their livelihood I want, like in a certain aspect. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I can totally empath- empathize with that. Like, especially when there's... Uh, to give the example of like bat- you know, being students, mm-hmm. there's a lot of highly motivated kids and adults out there that are trying to make a life from the- for themselves. Mm-hmm. And when you don't necessarily have time to stop and relax you get stuck in this repetitive mindset that you have yeah. to keep working, you have to keep going. And it, I, I don't have the best vocabulary, but <laughs> like it, it truly just, there's no other way to describe it other than it sucks. Yeah. And I think like what we can really take away from this episode is just like being self-aware, right? Yeah. Take some, like if, even if you think you're okay, like take a step back mm-hmm. and just like, evaluate everything evaluate how you're feeling and like the like is your what you're doing is it fulfilling to you that's perfect way to describe it 
me personally, not to negate from or detract from what you were saying, but I feel like I personally, I think, I truly felt like I was on the verge of experiencing burnout in university, um, like, last year, just because of how much I had to, like, work Mm -hmm. and do all my shit, and I'm sure it's points of your university career, you, (laughs) university career, you've also experienced the same thing. Yeah. I think the most important thing that I've personally taken into account in my life is, just being able to like drop the shit that's unnecessary in your life. Mm-hmm. So if there's someone that's causing or making you mad, just mm-hmm. leave them on the curb. <laughs> if there's someone that's making you mad, you drop them on the curb and you don't look back. Mm-hmm. If um, <laughs> if there is a club or something like that that you're not getting fulfillment out of, yeah. why the hell are you doing it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one thing to have a resume pattern, but what the hell does it mean if you're just doing it for the sake of adding it to your resume? Like, like to be honest, grad school and like admission people they're gonna Mm -hmm. see through your bullshit yeah like Like, if you're not fulfilled by it or excited by that like activity that you're doing then mm -hmm. they're they're gonna know they've been doing it for like they've met multiple kinds of people that have done that like i i'm sure you know a few people but um me personally whenever i hear people volunteering for like 10 different clubs and they're mm-hmm. presidents of, or execs on every single club. Yeah. Like, are you doing it because you're genuinely... Like, if you're doing it because you're genuinely interested, that's Amazing. awesome. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you have work-life balance, mm-hmm. but <laughs> if you're able to and that's you're not burnt yeah. out, that's so impressive. If you are burnt out and you're just doing it for the sake of having it on your resume, why not look for other experiences that could be fulfilling that you could add to your resume? Yeah, I agree. That sounds very hip. Uh, I was gonna say like it's it's hard just definitely yeah. They might have certain expectations for them, and you know, yeah. two like twenty year olds are telling this person, and they're like, "What do we know?" Yeah, right. But to be honest, like in the long term, do you really want to look back and see like, "Oh, you did this," but did you really enjoy it? Mm-hmm. The one way I can think about it is, let's say you wanna on a resume, you wanna show commitment and perseverance or something like that, and. There's two ways that you can go about showing that on a resume. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's say you could do it by maybe joining a club that you're interested in, Mm -hmm. which is great. You could do it by joining a club that you just want to add to your resume, Mm -hmm. which is not great. Or you can do something that's truly fulfilling by, Mm -hmm. again, joining a club that you're interested in or maybe picking up a hobby that or some activity that you've never really done before Mm -hmm. so maybe like running for example I know Januni I tried I (laughs) love my shoes at home and I haven't gotten out in like a week and a bit or more than that now but like you've been super consistent so far with getting off your ass and going on a run yeah it's quite it's it's been uh like I said it's been fulfilling actually yeah something that started off as like a I'll do it because I'm just stressed in the very moment yeah something that's been kind of a healthy coping mechanism Mm -hmm. for like Dealing with burnout. Yeah, physical activity, I think. Yeah, physical activity is a great way with helping with burnout. Mm-hmm. It releases all those endorphins and whatever the heck, yeah. the chemicals and the dopamine and I don't know. Yeah, take it from someone who like had like hadn't exercised since like grade nine, okay? Like mm-hmm. if I'm able to like get up, get out of the house, run even if it's for like just 10 minutes, mm-hmm. you can too, trust me. Like, if you're able to, if running isn't your thing, then oh, you yeah. can obviously find something else that you want to nice do. nice speed walking helps too. Or maybe, maybe just even like spending time outside. Or even if you want to go outside and just like journal a bit. Yeah. Reflect on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like literally any sort of activity that allows you to escape from the stresses of the work environment. Of reality. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so no. get off your ass. <laughs> so yeah, long story short, get off your ass. <laughs> Go outside, smell a flower, unless you're allergic to pollen or something like that, then maybe just, I don't know, do something. Do something that you love. Do, yeah. You do you. Life's what happens when you're busy making plans, dude. Thank you. Yeah.